Doctor, I'm really sorry. I've been entertaining this gentleman in the press for as long as possible, and I, I probably said all the wrong this things. Spanish flu. Did Where's you? it really come from, Doctor? America? Regardless of where it's from, it's here. You can tell your readers to stay inside. Well, what do you say to the assertion that the majority of American troops currently stationed at Old Trafford are presenting with the disease? No comment. What about this immunity we're all supposed to have? Can we assume that if you had it in the summer, you won't have it again? I'm afraid I cannot answer that. Are you going to have to close down the city? Look, I, I, I can't answer any of these questions, and so don't make up your own answers and then print them. Listen, why don't you take a leaflet? Yes, yes, print that if you want to be responsible, and don't panic people, and don't print rooms. Doctor. Just man to man. If we had it in summer, are we immune? I really don't know that. You have to close the city. You hear that from the town hall. Thank you. All families were swept away together, for this was indeed at the very height of the distemper. Time inured them to it all, and they ventured everywhere without hesitation. As I occasion to mention at large hereafter. What's that? Daniel Defoe, a journal of the plague year. Please tell us that you found something more recent than that. What plague year? 1665. Oh, 1665. The epidemiology is quite accurate. The first spread of infection, then dormancy, during which people start to move about again, then a second spread, even worse than the first. Dr. Niven was right. That was our first wave. Back in the spring. Well, it's not plague, it's flu, isn't it? So, well, flu has nothing in common with pneumonic or bubonic plague, Mrs. Lytton, and it is not helpful to refer to it in that way. Well, except that a second spread is common to most infectious diseases if the incubation period is long enough. It's the same with uh, the Black Death, the Great Plague, the Plague of Justinian in the middle 6th century, even your Russian flu, Doctor. It's because of human behaviour. People believe it's over, they start moving about again, and up it pops, worse than before. All this is medically established. Uh, yes, but I'm talking about socially. Aside from all the other problems, I think we need to start preparing for the social difficulties. It's the same with all significant epidemics. Social order breaks down. You have looting, fighting, unrest. The rich leave and the poor remain to die. What? Please, could you keep to the statistics, Mr. Dunks? All right. Medical office? I found this in the library, too. Uh, well... Not much of any use in there. Can I accept the charges? I thought that it wasn't spread by breath. It probably was. I thought that civil intervention wasn't necessary. It probably should have been. And I'm afraid that I allowed myself to be convinced by the powers that be when they said that they didn't want to notify the disease. Mum? Yes. Well, I did better than Sir Arthur Dan Newson. Uh, they were dropping like flies while he was MOH and Brighton. Oh, God. All right, all right, all right. Just, just, just stay. Just stay with him, all right? All right. It's Sam. Who? Who am I, my son? Oh, right, right, Mrs. Lytton, get yourself home right away. Quick, quickly, we could spare you, please. Thank you. Yes, quickly. I don't want you talking about plague. People fight in the streets because they get panicked. And if you say the word plague to them, that's the first thing they'll do. It is a plague, though, isn't it? Uh, oh, sweetheart. What a sweat. Yeah. What's the advice, love? Um. Right. We've got to keep him isolated and, uh, well, let's get that window open. Get some fresh air in. Weren't we to keep a fire going? Weren't we to keep it warm? Well, I don't know. Isn't that normal flu? Well, they never said what to do when, you, when you've got it. Only what to do, to, you know, to stop it spreading. Right. Um, let's wash our hands. And I'll I'll get some water from the pump. That's it. Um. Well, maybe we should move him in there. You know, let's, let's get something to put a curtain up there and. 
We better stay in here. Maybe he needs a mask. Maybe we need a mask. Oh, Mum, I don't know. Damn papers all day, no bloody use. Yes, it is. I stopped counting. There's a woman down our street posts a white feather through our letterbox every week. You are not a card. You've got flat feet. You stupid bloody clerk. Stop. Stop it, Mr. Dunks. This is your war, if you want to fight it. We'll have more of Dr. Niven's pamphlets printed. We'll get disinfectant and coal to as many houses as we can. Hygiene and warmth are the best ways to prevent the spread of the illness. Those who are sick will have a shoulder to lean on, while the rest of us keep our heads down and carry on. Isn't that right, Dr. Niven? No, that is not what I've been telling you. We need to close the city. This pestilence spreads at about the same rate that a man can travel, and it spreads easily. We don't yet know how, but probably by direct contact, skin to skin, possibly by contact with infected materials, which we call fomites. Dirty handkerchiefs, anything with infected sputum or blood on it, any soiled clothes or fabric should be burnt straight away. Do you want everybody wandering around naked? No, they don't want folk wandering around at all. You want us all to stay at home, don't you? That's what you've told your pet journalists, isn't it? Yes, I want everybody in isolation. Close my cinemas. Cancel the trams. Cancel the trams, close the cinemas, shut the schools, the mills, the public houses. Help the hospitals deal with the patients that they have and not provide them with thousands more. Shut the city. We can't enforce that. We need the army. Half the army are in Salford Hospital. We're not establishing martial law. I wouldn't know how to in any case. Well, short of a miracle cure, this is the only way to stop it. I've nothing from London on this matter, Dr. Nevin, and we must follow London's lead. Yes, London is letting it run its own course, however fatal, but this is Manchester. Manchester makes its own choices, its own destiny. Too bloody right. If we do implement these closures, it is to be understood that they will reopen and be back to normal again as soon as possible. It is understood. Uh, I will not be closing my Sunday schools. I beg your pardon? As an officer of God's communion, I refuse to sanction the closing of the Sunday schools. This thing kills children. Adults can look after their own spiritual well-being. I will not be turning the children away. Don't look so depressed, James. They'll come round. When? When the children are dead? We need to isolate now, or this thing will get worse. We need to cut it off. We need to starve it to death. Mr. Gold has agreed to clear his cinemas. Well, that's good. For how long? Oh, 15 minutes between the shows. I asked for 30, but 15 is enough to clear the air, isn't it? Well, what do you think? I think I'm doing my best, James. You can't isolate an entire city, even in the best of bloody times, and certainly not with no police force, the army away, and people will starve to death if they can't get into work. Look, be realistic. We're going to close most of the schools. You've got that. And the city will provide milk, sugar, and coal for sick families. When? Immediately. I'm not a monster, James. And how will we get it to them? I don't know. Door to door. We'll run out in five minutes. We cannot abandon people to their fates. We've moved on from the days of the plague. We need a system. Well, you provide me with one, then.
Plague? I thought we weren't supposed to mention plague. I need you to find out the exact quantities that we have available of milk, glaxo, coal and sugar and their costs. We also need to find out how many men and vehicles that we have at our disposal. And don't begin to tell me that there isn't the time. Meeting at the council chamber, I'm sure Mr. O'Donnell could spare you. Public monuments and lavatories has now been subsumed into health, gentlemen, please. Right, so two of you go to the Salvation Army, two of you go to the Boys Brigade, two of you go to the Women's Social and Political Union. Dr. Niven wants at least three volunteers for everyone here. Come on, this is our war now. Oh, today will be mainly a paper chase. Tomorrow, the real work will start. We will find the homes with children from the school registers. We'll find the homes without a man from the war casualty list. We'll find the poor homes from the special assistance register. I want to have all these documents and papers here and collated by tea time. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Trams have stopped running. Prepare for some extra leg work. Six pounds worth of milk, 25 pounds worth of coal, 30 pounds worth of sugar. Per street. No, that's the entire city. Well, good God, an island. Well, let's see what these devils are. See what we've actually got. And, I mean, all these things are miles out of the city. Let's stir things up a bit. Let's get this coal into where it's really needed. That's like there, there, there. Well, how many delivery men do we have? Well, it's changing every day. Let's work on the assumption that half of them will be ill on any one day. Uh, 20 wagons. And how many homes can they do in a day? Well, they can do streets. No, 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 no. I, I don't want streets. I want it targeted at homes. Which ones? Well, the, the homes with a family and no man there. Homes that live on less than 18 shillings a week. Homes that require assistance. I don't know where they are. Well, that's why we sent our people out. They're in there, there, and there. Masks are available for those who wish them. to Stretford Street. Yeah. Half a dozen houses there without call. Straight on to Heath and Moor, Mossside and Didsbury. You and homes, yes, yes, homes. Specific homes, not streets, homes. Oh, no. There's not enough. Pardon? There's not enough coal, there's not enough wagoners. There's more of them ill than we thought. Then we have to send it to the parts of the city with the most children. That has to be the priority. Yeah, over here. Parts of the city with the most schools. So, we have those three on that trolley there. Yes, will you kindly pass on a message to Sir Arthur? Well, I, I'm terribly sorry to hear that, but um, yes, the message is that we are ready and anxious to conduct trials of the vaccine here in Manchester to stop this thing spreading from. Well, would you send someone down the street to tell her? No, I understand, but what is the point in me dictating a telegram? In what way is that different from you sending someone down the road with a message? All oh, right, yes, yes, right, I understand. Mrs. Lytton, please come back to work, sickness permitting. 
Stop. Well, we've lost another 300 since Monday. Damn it. And there's something else. I think there's a pattern. We expect to find deaths at each end of the spectrum, and there are, but there are also a considerable number of deaths here where there should be very few. The curve of mortality peaks between the ages of 20 and 34. Oh, perhaps it's because the, the very young and the very old are dying at home, and what we're looking at here is the middle group who die in hospital. No, 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 no. You know as well as I do, they shouldn't be dying at all. There should be no deaths here at all. They should be best equipped to fight it off. It doesn't make any sense for the young, fit, healthy. Well, troops often expire when they come back home. No, oh, no, I wouldn't explain enough. No. Why are the strongest know the most vulnerable? Why are they know in the most danger? It's perverse. Yes, Dr. No. Yes, I, uh, I am Mrs. Lytton's employer. Is this where Mrs. Lytton lives? Yes, Brick Street. Is Brick Street on our list? No, no, I don't think so. It's not a priority. There's not so many schools here. What did happen to your eye, by the way? <laughs> I advised a gentleman against spitting in the streets. This is the thanks I got. Which one is it? Mrs. Lytton's house? Uh, yes. I'm Dr. Niven. I received a telephone call. Is everything all right? You'd best come in. Mrs. Lytton. You're all the way to Salford. I'm so sorry, Mrs. So sorry. Died day before yesterday. Apparently it was quick. They buried him already. Some of his pals buried him. Apparently he wrote me a letter, but the, um, the sergeant, you know, told him to burn it. Burn all his stuff. God, Peggy, I'm so sorry. Stops it spreading, doesn't it? What did you do about soldiers, Doctor? I didn't... What did you do I... you know, about the grown-ups? Because it's not the children, is it? I mean, he's, he's fine, just a bit off-colour with it. It's the men that it's killing. You know, it's three on this road, and now, my John... So what's happening with this sickness? Is it does nothing that we expected. Well, who's going to look after this lot if I get it, eh? You'll be looked after. You'll all be looked after. I mean, the system is, is now in place. What, what bloody system? Well, your system might be working elsewhere, but it, it ain't working round here. I mean, have you been outside lately? Of course you bloody haven't. <laughs> There's people starving behind their own front doors because no one will go anywhere near them. People are frightened. You're meant to be in charge. You're meant to know what to do. Peggy, the doctor's come all this way to see you. He only means well. Sorry.
will ensure that her wages are paid for as long as she likes. She can come back to work at any time. Thank you. Take her to the monster. <laughs> Attention, Dr. Dickinson, if he himself is not ill. Tell him that she's incubated for query three days. Low bloods and fever, but no cyanosis yet. <laughs> Thank you, driver. Walk on. Latest figures? Coming in like clockwork now every damn day. Why didn't people give their figures a fortnight ago? London's a catastrophe. They're losing 1,500 a week. I'm starting to call it another Passchendaele. I don't know what else I can do, Mr. Dunks. I've been doing this all my life. Ask me to get clean water or milk or get rid of rodents. But even stop TB, I can do that. I've done that, but I can't stop this. Just arrived from London. Limited stocks of prophylactic vaccine. Immediate distribution, please. Come with me. Lady not in the main ward. You have no more beds, Doctor. The hair is tough white. Uh, although that's, that's not critical. And look at the fingernails. You must attack the keratin for some reason. Yeah. It's all right. I know it looks terrible, but I don't them survive like that. What is your prognosis here, Matron? She'll be all right, providing she makes it through the night. If cyanosis presents, it's not so good. Yes, but there's no cyanosis presenting. Not yet. Why I insist that she has to find a main ward. She needs to have oxygen into the lungs as a matter of urgency. That is the center of the attack. I'm aware of this, Doctor. I know you're under pressure, Matron, but please. I'll see what I can do, Doctor. You're taking care of, rest assured. this disease doing? Everyone gets flu, everyone always gets flu, but why is it the strongest that die? So horribly. 
hemorrhaging in these lungs is the worst we've ever seen. It's, it's brutal. It's like, the, it's like they've been attacked. Well, illness is a battle, isn't it? It's a war. Why has this last war been so destructive? Because it was a, a war of attrition. Mm, that's right. Because we have more horrible weapons, because each side was equally matched and couldn't overrun the other one without tearing itself to pieces. For the past four years, we've been pounding the same patch of ground into oblivion. Or maybe the flu is like that. You mean, the stronger the defences of the person it's invading, the bloodier the battle? It simply passes over the weak. It just overpowers them and moves on. But with the strong, it stays and fights to the death. It actually likes a fight. through if she can just hang on. She won't give up her, Peggy. Not without a fight. Peggy, my dear. <sighs> Peggy, how are you feeling? I think the child should leave now. Mrs. Kershaw, Mrs. Kershaw, please. It's all right, sir. It's all right now. No, cyanosis is presented. Good. Managed extremely well, both of you. It's your efforts that have stopped Manchester going to hell the way of Liverpool and London. How many have we dead? How many have we dead, Mr. Donks? Two and a half thousand. 
Out of a million. So far, most of them women, many of them were young. Yes, I appreciate that. What about this vaccine? The vaccines made no quantifiable difference to the rates of infection or mortality. Might have done, if we'd had it in time. A lot of things might have made a difference if we had done them in time. Well, we can pat ourselves on the back. Manchester escaped the worst. Anyway, we've got to get on. We need to get this city moving again, get the schools open. We think it's the right time to announce the end of the epidemic. The death rates have dropped. And we're stretched to breaking. It's nearly spring, we must get back to work. Wasn't the great plague signed off in the spring, Mr. Dot? Yes, that's right. This was no great plague, James. And in no small part, thanks to you. But we've isolated the city long enough. We need to get back to normal. Let's declare it over. Forget the whole business. Put this ghastly second wave behind us.